So, uh, good morning. We're up there to the almost the end of the weekend. It's Friday morning. Happy Friday, everybody. Going to be a high today of 80 degrees. Might be some rain this mm. afternoon. Mm -hmm. Might be some fog in your area this morning. Be careful out there. Looks like a beautiful lunchtime. Sunny in mid-70s. And a and Friday. It's Friday, which means, now that it's the school year again. Our good friend, Triple P. Trisha Lightfoot. With Trisha. It's Hi. here. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, dispenser of wisdom. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, you know, in fun, but seriously, I, I always learn great things for parenting when you come in, Tricia. So thanks for what you and the whole team do at Triple P of Elkhart County. Well, thanks. It's very nice of you to say that. What do you want us to, uh, to know about today? Well, the school year started for almost every school in our area, but there's some that still start next mm -hmm. week. But let's... I just thinking, I was like, okay, my kids came home. They had tons of permission slips that I already had to sign. Yeah. I'm like, okay, homework has started. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> was that their response? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going to talk about homework and how we can set healthy homework habits for our kids. Because, I mean, those are study habits that are going to follow them through life. And I was talking with a coworker in a meeting earlier this week, and we were just talking about how do we study like, let's share, how do we study? How do we retain new knowledge and all of that? And he was really great because he was sharing. He's like, you know, I was really smart in school and I didn't really have to try that much. So I never really had to take notes because I'm such an auditory learner. That, but can, that can end up not developing good study habits. So that's exactly what he said. He said as soon as he was getting into the more challenging classes, high school, college level, he had to start to develop those study habits, and he was way behind the curve compared to all of his friends who have had to study who and was take this again? notes. One of our triple Oh, you didn't give, give, give a name. Okay. I'm not saying okay. names. No. Protecting the innocent. I feel like he and I should have coffee. <laughs> yeah. For, yep, yep. Something, so what seems like, oh, a blessing. Oh, you just naturally do well. Yeah. You end up realizing, oh, I didn't really hone those study skills when I was younger. Yeah. Right, and I had never thought about it from that perspective because I am I have to write things down. I have to doodle. Mm. I have to be doing something with my hands or fidgeting with something to retain what I'm hearing. That's just how my brain works. So helping your child figure out how they're going to retain their knowledge and to help them become diligent and set good right. self-regulation skills just to keep working and study a little bit for the test today, study a little bit tomorrow. By Friday, you should be pretty well good set you know for your tests because you've worked hard all week so we just want to encourage you today to work on that with your kids and to enjoy that time maybe one way to get at what you're saying at least in part is something that's used a lot in kind of uh, the work world or adult life which is make sure your goals are stretch goals make sure they're attainable but make sure you do have to stretch a little bit mm -hmm. to get there not yeah. too easy not too hard Goldilocks goals. Goldilocks. <laughs> hey, wait, can I trademark that? Just <laughs> right. I'm going to remember right. that now. <laughs> but, so, so what are some things we can remember? Well, to remember, like, don't stress. Like, homework's stressful not only for the kids, but a lot of times for adults. Like, oh my goodness, I homeschooled my kids through fourth grade. And that's where I had to stop because schoolwork between me and my kids became super stressful because they'd get frustrated, I'd get frustrated. Mm. We made it like, through math tangents once, <laughs> but we haven't used them since. <laughs> yeah, so, so know your limits on your own frustration skills or levels, excuse me, with homework, but then also come up with a plan to minimize frustration and stress. So maybe think about like, okay, your kids are getting home from school, you're getting home from work. A lot of times we like to just tell our kids, get your homework done right away, let's get it done with, you can have the rest of the evening to mm -hmm. play. Maybe be okay with just setting some time aside and say, hey, would you like to take a break for an hour? before you start your homework, giving them some free time to decompress from the day, to have fun, get their body They've moving. already done that by the time I get home from work. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> but um, no, no, right. Don't, don't be too much of a slave driver. Yeah, because we come home, we're getting ready for shift two for adult life. Our kids kind of have to go along with the flow with that, but it is okay to allow them some free time and some play time and give yourself some time to unwind as well before you go ahead and get them started with their homework. And then always be aware to ask about their homework. 
kids who hate homework are not going to volunteer to mom and dad mm. that they have homework. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. That's a very good point. So ask about it. Check their backpacks. Check <laughs> check their teacher folders that the teachers sent home. If you have a school app that sends out information, check that. Be involved in your kid's school life, even if you can't get into the classroom to volunteer and be present. Be involved. And then make it a part of your nightly routine. Set a time, set a place for them to be working on homework. Maybe if they don't even have homework for the day, that'd be a great time for for them to work on their daily reading. Oh. You know, mm. be consistent with that. That's a good that. point. That's a good point. What, yeah. Go ahead, Cody. I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say, like, what happens? I'm not here yet, but it just <laughs> occurred to me that one day we're going to get there. When you transition from the parent being able to really help, because mm-hmm. this is, you know, kids stuff. This is, I, I, can, I can help with this. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly they bring home something and you're like, I don't know what that is. I I have uh-huh. no help here. Like we're <laughs> my oldest is in fourth grade, so I think I still have a couple of years left. <laughs> but one day he's gonna he's gonna bring home something that I didn't even learn in school. Like what happens okay. when you lose that superpower as a parent of always knowing the answers on homework? That's a great question because it's challenging. Because all of a sudden, like, shoot, math changed. How they do math and right. how they you know work through the problem solving has changed since we were in school for a lot of us. Um, So that's a really great question because it's a fear a lot of parents have. Like, what do I do when I'm not that all-knowing anymore? Am I going to lose respect in my kids' eyes? Am I going to lose credibility? But, you know, God has gifted us with a lot of technology. So we do have access to computers and Google searches type things and teacher emails. I would highly encourage you to help your child learn how to problem solve by encouraging them. Well, like, okay, I can't figure this out. You haven't figured it out. Who in your class is good at this? Who else could you talk to for help? Do you have your teacher's email? Are you okay emailing your teacher, maybe? Is your teacher okay being emailed? <laughs> yeah, like, right. like that's are. what my permission yeah. slips were all about okay. yesterday and this yep. morning, signing permissions for teachers to email me and me to email that's teachers. That's so cool. So, wow, yeah. I am old because nobody would have thought of that when I was a kid Well, yeah, school. I always thought when I was in school that, I mean, the teachers, you talked to them at the school. Mm-hmm. And after that, they were... The access was over. <laughs> yeah. So not not so much anymore. Okay. So that's the, pretty cool. The only it's thing really I remember cool. talking with any of my teachers about homework uh, was one year. This only worked the first day of school. I went up to my teacher. I said, I said, uh, ma'am, would, would, would I ever get punished? Would you ever punish me for anything that I didn't do? She said, oh, no, of course not. I said, okay, good, because I didn't do my homework. <laughs> that only... It was actually the second day of school. How well did that work? <laughs> Didn't work well. <laughs> that was the only time that, that I got her to, to fall for that. <laughs> yeah, so well, cool. as your kids are working on their homework and as you're, you know, keeping the stress levels low and frustration levels low with this, because challenges are going to happen, so mm-hmm. be prepared ahead of time. Set the school year off well. Have a plan. Um, praise your kids for working hard. Even when they're frustrated, be like, you know, I, I can tell you're frustrated, but you're working really hard. I'm proud of you. Keep going. You can do this. Yeah. And Good reminder. Praise the effort for them. Yeah. Okay. So Great stuff tip. on homework. And uh, for all, any kids listening on the way to school, we have a lot of younger people listening before getting ready or on the way to school. Hang in there. Mm-hmm. There are ways for homework to be something that you actually kind of sort of look forward to sometimes. So hang in there. Also, if you didn't get your homework done, you've got about 30 minutes left <laughs> right. to get it out on the bus right. and finish it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell when it's done last minute because it's got that scribbly writing. There's the holes ride. poked in it because he didn't do it on a table. <laughs> so, uh, so as always, great events coming up mm-hmm. with Triple P of Elkhart County including one of the most popular of all time. I see Screenagers on the calendar. Yes, it is back. We're very excited, and it's coming up quick. uh, August 22nd at 6.30. Is that, so so that's a Thursday. It's a Thursday, Thursday of next week. Mm-hmm. At Goshen Middle School. Goshen Middle School. It's free admission. We've got free child care, so please feel free to bring your children. Children 10 and older are invited to even sit in with the parents and watch this as well oh, and learn cool. about screen technology and how to use it well and responsibly. So it's really fantastic. I take my kids to this, so... Um, I know they've seen it a few times and they always roll their eyes. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But it's really good knowledge. You guys need to get this ingrained. So we're going to yes. go back again. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, Screenagers, Thursday night at Goshen Middle School next week. And again, uh, for kid, for younger kids who wouldn't view it with you, you, mm-hmm. you did not hear incorrectly, free child care. Yes. 
Also for yeah. use of the bathrooms. This is not Europe. <laughs> this is America. <laughs> we don't charge for bathrooms here. Yeah, so if you have any questions or you'd like any other information about Triple P, check us out at triplepelkhartcounty.org. And you can either contact us by email there or phone line or just check out our site. Come join us. Thanks, awesome. Trisha. Thanks, Trisha. Bye.